TNT Sports welcomes you back live to the Daytona International Speedway and the EAS GNC Live Well 300 for the NASCAR Bush Series. And Tony, first of all, let's talk about the glare situation for the drivers. As Alan pointed out before the break, not something a lot of people probably thought about this morning. What's it now, like? In this part of the afternoon, it is very, very tough, especially coming off a of turn four. You're looking directly into the sunshine, and it, it makes it very, very difficult to see. you got to keep in mind, we're at Daytona Beach. There's a lot of sand here, and that sand hits those windscreens. And every time it hits the windscreen, it makes it look like a little star. So all that sand and, and grit there, it really takes a toll on the windshield. And that's why they tried to paint part of the windshield on Spencer's car to try and diminish some of that glare. Exactly. You can put a dark shield on your visor, but you're still getting the glare into the into your eyes. So if they put that, that black paint on there, hopefully it, it'll shield that enough to, the, to where he can see underneath that and not have the, the glare right in his eyes. But also, I told you guys, Jimmy Spencer was going to get back to the front before this thing was you over. And he got it before the pit stop. You either. couldn't wait to get that, and he'd worked his way back up to second. But then now his strategy's out the window. Well, it's out the window, but he knows he's got a good enough car that he can win this thing. If he can get back to second from coming clear from the back like that, everybody up in the front there knows he's got a, he's a contender for this win. And they also know he's not in the Daytona 500 <laughs> tomorrow, so this is his day to shine, isn't it? Well, it's, not only is it his day to shine, but he's awful hungry, too, so uh, he, he's going to be a guy to watch for the rest of the race. Okay, well, obviously some interesting developments, including the guys up front that decided to take fuel only, Alan. Yeah, how about that, Benny? That was quite a shock because we've seen, it looked to me like in all the stuff we've seen so far that changing four tires was very, very important to handling the race car, but I don't know. You surprised about that, Tony? All it tells me is that they're very, very confident that they have very good driving race cars and, and the handling is right where they want it. So uh, they may not want to take a chance on, on putting another set of tires that might make the handling just a little bit different. So uh, they obviously are very happy with the way their cars are driving right But now. you'll be taking good notes here to see what happens, won't you? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you kidding me? Dale Earnhardt Jr. and David Green, the white car right behind him, just took the fuel only. Stacy Compton, third car in line in that outside lane, just got right side tires, but he's got a problem report that he's got a tire going flat and as the field comes to the restart he's got to give up third spot and come to pit road there he comes down pit road he's following the pace car on the pit road ouch man what a tough great run. flag great flag a hundred miles to go at daytona michael waltrip Restarts in 22nd spot. Remember, he got back on the lead lap at that caution. Marty? Boy, what an awful break for these guys, Alan. Their strategy last time was two right side tires and fuel only. But the car behind them in line said the left rear looks really bad. Then NASCAR told him the left rear looks like it's going down. You need to come in. And indeed, there is a cut in the left rear tire for Stacey Compton. They were in a great position to pull off the win today. David Green, goodbye. Back to sixth place, Matt Kenseth moves up to second. Yeah, this is going to be real interesting to see if Dale Tudor can hang on. I'll tell you what, I, I think those four tires may be the thing that you need here. We'll just have to wait it out and see. You got a lot of cars lined up behind him right now that do have fresher tires. David Green in that white car that just got shuffled out of second, driving for Tommy Baldwin Racing. One of those teams trying to find backing, or there may not be a next week for them. There you see the top five cars, Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth, Jason Keller, Greg Biffle, and Jimmy Spencer. Let's follow up on some of the drivers involved in that last accident with Dave Burns. Hank Parker Jr. is one of those drivers. His crew is working on the car. Hank, what was that like, and are you thinking about getting back out there? Yeah, we're going to try to get back out for a few more laps. We, uh, we had a pretty decent race car at the beginning when the clouds were out, and then the sun came out, we got real tight. So we were just trying to free our race car up, and... We had a bad pit stop, and it got us to the back, and that's what happens when you get in the back. I guess we're just going to have to work on it. All right, they are going to work on it and try to return to this race. Marty? Dave, here is the source of heartbreak for Stacy Compton. The little cut right there and a cut right here. The tire heated up and was warping on the side. That cut may have cost Stacy Compton a win at Daytona. Alan? Stacy one lap down in 25th place as Jason Keller gets shuffled out of third. Greg Biffle in the 60, slides up ahead of him. Here comes Spencer. And Biffle goes down to help Spencer. Since Spencer helped him get by, but look at Jimmy. He just goes by on the outside. Well, Purvis gave Jimmy a pretty good push there on the back straightaway. I don't think Jimmy had much of a choice. He had such a good run. He didn't want to get out of the throttle, so he just moved on up the lane. Bobbing and leaving off of turn four. That's Purvis in the green and blue 37. 
His teammate, Jamin McMurray, the 27, right behind Purvis, but here comes Keller back on the outside. Chevrolet leads. Fords are second and third. That's Spencer's Pontiac on the outside. And Jeff Purvis in a Chevrolet below him. This is going on about 185 to 190 miles per hour. Last time by average speed, 186 miles per hour. Now remember, Kenseth and Biffle are teammates at Roush Racing on the Winston Cup side. Biffle is driving for Roush in this series. Kenseth is not. He is driving for Riser Enterprises. Separately owned team. I'm really, I guess, impressed with the Kepley engine in that 17 car. Robbie Riser told me that was the first Ford engine that they had built up in Wisconsin. And it looks like for the first crack out of the box, they're doing real well. Jimmy Spencer sliding up underneath. Going to put Jamie McMurray back to spot. Marty. Well, and a very impressive performance for the engine for Matt Kenseth considering they've had overheating problems all week long, Alan, and in half the hour yesterday, they lost an engine, so that's why they had to go to the back of the field. This is a new race engine, and they were very worried about it before the race, but it's doing an outstanding job on the track right now. Oh, look at that three wide back there. Holds your breath racing at Daytona. Experience or not, these guys are getting after it. Well, see, now, if they had experience, they would know better. And we didn't have this. You see, inexperience, as far as excitement, is not a bad thing. Michael Waltrip restarted 22nd. He's only gotten up to 16th right now. How about Matt Kenzer? Remember, he had to come down pit road because the window net came down on his car way back at lap number 13. He was just in front of leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. when a caution came out. He came all the way back around through the field. And now he's up to second. There we see Michael Walker trying to follow Ricky Hendrick in the five car. Now we see Michael trying to pass Ricky Hendrick in the five car. Tony, these guys need to be a little bit patient because we still have a long ways to go. That's very true, but I think it's going to be hard to convince Greg Miller to be patient right now. Even though he's got his teammate in front of him, we know from watching him early in the race that he wants to get back in the lead as quick as possible. So it'll be interesting to see if they'll actually work together or if Biffle will get too aggressive and try to get back to the lead. Then see Jack Sprague, the 24 car, following Jeff Purvis. Second yellow car in the picture is Kevin LePage. Started way in the back, 35th. Haven't talked about him all day. He's picking his way to the front, still on the lead lap. Looks like Biffle about caught the wall that time, Tony. Yeah, he's getting a little aggressive here. The biggest thing is they just need to stay in line right now because they got a lot of guys that are in a hurry behind him. So uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. Front four, single file. Double file from fifth on back. It's been an exciting race so far. Expect it to be just as exciting down to the finish. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT.